All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna talk about Jamal Charlo and Canelo Alvarez and the fact that Jose Benavides believes that fight is gonna get made and why. Why is kind of funny. Let's talk about that in this video. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. In this video, we're going to talk about something that Jose Benavitez, uh, observation that he made, and the fact that he believes that the Jamel Charlo versus Jamal Charlo, excuse me, versus Canelo Alvarez fight is going to get made and why. But before I do that, let me ask you please make sure if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so that you can be notified of when we release more videos and also make sure you when you hit the bell icon hit all notifications so you get all of the notifications otherwise you'll get them occasionally anyway that would be greatly appreciated so let's get into this there was an interview that was given by jose benavitez jose benavitez is the father of is the father of david benavitez the two the former two-time or the two-time former I'm not sure how you say that the former wbc champion and 168 pounds, and he's a and he was a former twice. He had won originally won the title, but then he lost his title, uh, the WBC Super Middleweight title, because of a re recreational drug. Uh, and then after that, he wound up being two pounds overweight for a title defense and got stripped because he lost it on the scale. Very unfortunate in events for David Benavitez, who who without that being the case would definitely be considered one of the top young fighters in the world. Dude, he's only like 24 years old. Absolutely a uh, terrific fighter. Would Is definitely as good as any of the other young fighters in boxing. You know, other than my guy, Jerron Ennis, who I think is the best. But it's for having been a two-time champion, it's, it's kind of hard to think about him as being that young. But regardless, uh, he is no longer the WBC champion. And Canelo Alvarez, when uh, came and picked up his belt and is now the WBC, WBA champion. After he got the WBA and the WBC, excuse me, the WBC title, he went on to unify uh, the division and become the undisputed champion in 168. Now there's talks about who he's going to fight next. Jose Benavitez, who was the father of, of David says that he believes that it is going to be Jamal Char is going to be Jamal Charlo. I believe that it's going to be Jamal Charlo also because of the way that everything is kind of panning out. You have um, the other options that are there for Canelo Alvarez kind of fading away in that at 157, uh, 175 pounds, Baturbiev is going to be fighting, uh, Baturbiev is going to be fighting Joe Smith. So that takes away a unif two unification fights that people were saying he was considering at 175. Uh, would leave, I do believe that only leaves uh, Bivol so, and I, for, the, for the Bivol's belt. So I don't think that he's going to do that next. And if he does go 175, it would make more sense that he would fight after the Baturbiev and Joe Smith fight. Because in that case, you get a combination, you get a... Uh, a three belt title for him and he's one away from undisputed so just logistically that doesn't it makes more sense for him to wait at 175 until after that unification fight the makabu fight is definitely going to get past pushed past his next fight date which is may 7th and for me that leaves the jamel the jamal charlo fight also because the jamal charlo fight is probably the most money and the biggest fight that he can make now, Jose Benavitez said that he believes that the fight's going to take place for a different reason, man. And I was like, wow, I've heard this said a lot before. So I wanted to respond to it when, you know, now that it's been said by somebody that I have a lot of respect for, too. By the way, Jose, Jose Benavitez is not one of these off the hook fathers that, you know, is just saying anything, talking out the side of his neck. He tends to be very, very respectful to people, uh, kind of a soft spoken guy. Um, not saying that he's a soft guy or he doesn't have, you know, really competitive nature. That's almost impossible to be the case, seeing as he is a he is doing what he does for a living. But a very respectful guy, a guy that seems to have a lot of sense um, and doesn't come off half cocked very often. He says that he believes that Jamal Charlo would get the fight because of things that Jamal Charlo is doing in his career that shows weaknesses to Canelo Alvarez. Specifically, what he says is that he sees Jamal Charlo looking like he's losing 
that he's losing his uh, focus, that he's drinking more, you know, he's drinking more. You see Jamal Charlo out at different parties. You've I've heard this from other people saying that Jamal Charlo, you know, looks like he's drunk when he's giving this interview or that interview, right? And I'm and so he says that, and he also says because Jamal Charlo is moving up in weight, and you know, from 160, he's a smaller guy. He's not a big guy at 168. Obviously, just opposing. Uh, Jamal Charlo to his son uh, David, who is a very very big 168, and I would not be surprised if he was if he moved to 175, if he moved to 175 pounds for before too long, yeah. So that's why he says that Jamal that Canelo is seeing that out of out of Jamel Jamal, and also that Jamal's last couple you know performances may not have been up to snuff with what he was doing you know earlier in his career, and so we look like that that Jamal is losing basically that Jamal is smaller than the other guys and that he's losing focus. Now I have heard this is one of these discussions that I like to have because you hear the same thing being said in a lot of comment sections. You know on the channel we do videos, we put up videos every day about a variety of different boxers: Canelo, David Benavitez, Jamal. So whenever you do that, you hear a lot of stuff in the comment section. I don't always respond to them, but I hear them. And that is something that has been echoed a lot in the in the uh, comment sections of my videos and in on Twitter, right, about Jamal, the same, uh, at least the observation about him drinking too much and losing focus, right? This is my take on it. Um, I don't believe that that is the case. Uh, Jamal Charles, every time that he that somebody has said that, been on his Instagram feed and said, oh, you're drinking. He's like, look, man, we don't drink. You know, this I think that's just how the dude looks when he's looks like when he's tired. Not everybody, you know, is drinking when they are or man, you know, he may be doing something other than drinking. Right. That would give you know, that would give him a slight buzz. I can't can't speak. You can't speak on that. But to me, I don't think that that is something I don't think that that is a, something that is a big worry with um, with Jamal. I've never heard Jamal out in the public slurring his speech or doing things that was acting crazy. He just looked like he was a little bit tired, right? Also, as far as like you know the weight and Jamal Jamal moving up and being a smaller guy at 168 than the other 168 guys, well, that can go both ways. Jam Canelo Alvarez is a small 160 uh, 68 pound fighter. He's moving up from the same weight class that Jamal Charlo's moving up from. And Jamal Charlo is taller, he's longer, and he has a bigger frame than than Canelo Alvarez does. So I don't think that he's a small guy relative to uh relative to uh Canelo Alvarez. And more importantly, uh j the size thing can go both ways because when you fight bigger guys, a lot of times you're fighting slower guys, right? So Jamal Charlo, I think it has a good has a good foot speed, he has good hand speed that comes from being able to compete with guys at the smaller weight classes where you know where guys are smaller, right? And you know, one of the people that have made that observation um about you know actually dealing with smaller fighters is Sean Porter. Sean Porter said one time that, you know, he was at 154 pounds early in his career and he actually found it more difficult when he moved down to 147 because he was like, look, these guys are a lot faster, right? If you recall with, with Sean Porter, he fought, I do believe, in the 160s when he was in the amateur. So moving down and fighting guys that were smaller, he said it was an adjustment because these guys' punches are coming so much faster than the bigger guys are. So I think that that could come into play. Not that I don't I don't have a, uh, an issue with Jose Benavidez's observation, just kind of pointing out a different way to look at it. Um, but at the same time, I want to make sure that, that people shouldn't discount, discount Jamal Charlo as a legitimate you know, contender for uh, for Canelo Alvarez. He's an undefeated world champion, just like other people say Canelo Al Alvarez is fighting all the time. But I think he's just as good at, or better than the guys that, that uh, Canelo Alvarez has already fought, with the exception, you know, of, of probably Floyd Mayweather Jr., who, you know, obviously is an extra special, you know, historic level type of great fighter, you know, some people argue the you know TBE. I wouldn't say that, but he's definitely the best I've seen this century, right? But anyway, I just don't think that they should discount Jamal Charlo like that. 
Uh, Jamal Charlo, I don't think he's going to let drinking and partying and all that stuff get in his way. They don't really seem like that that type of guy. This is no Adrian Bronner. It's no Adrian Bronner type of situation. I think in the some of the fights against Montiel or maybe people point to the Korobov fight. You know, the Korobov fight, he's fighting a southpaw. Montiel guy, he may have been bo a little bit bored. Montiel might have won two, three rounds in that in that fight but you know he just didn't dominate and blow uh montiel out like some people said that he should but anyway that's my take on the matter you let me know what you think in the comment section and with that i'm out peace